Ladies and gentlemen, we had another absolutely enormous week. I'd say we made more headway last week than we've made since the start of this movement. Thank you mainstream media for having to put my cards on literally dozens of outlets trying to tell everybody they're fake, they're frauds, we're scam artists. Why? Because we're educating people. We're letting them know a mandate is not a law. A mandate is something they try to force you to do, but they have to give you a way out or it's not legal. So all we are doing is letting everybody know that freedom exists and you still have it. Yeah. Why? Because freedom is essential. They want to make us look bad. They want to tell us we're killing people by not wearing a mask. They want to tell us we're irresponsible. They want to tell us we're anti-science. Why are they making up all these lies? Because it's the media that's fake. Not the carts. The carts are providing information. The card can be a blank card with a picture of my friggin' face on it. As long as it says, I have a medical exemption. That is your exemption. And rather than the media calling the cards fake and trying to cause more division between our society as we see them do, why wouldn't they be honest and just say, hey businesses, these people made an educational card to let everybody know that you have to honor medical exemptions. So why wouldn't they just put on their press release, these cards are an educational tool to show people and the businesses that they have to honor medical exemptions. It's that simple. If they said that, there would be no controversy. We wouldn't have someone getting shot because they showed up to a grocery store without a mask. We wouldn't have people getting physically assaulted because they had the audacity to not wear a mask. We wouldn't have people getting chased out of stores illegally because the business owners are told by the media that they can refuse people without a mask. because the cards are brilliant. Oh, the cards show everybody the truth. The cards show everybody the hypocrisy. And the cards show everybody that this is how you stop the progression. Why are we against the mask? The freedom of choice is essential. Why? Because it doesn't stop with the masks. Mandatory masks leads to mandatory contact tracing. Mandatory contact tracing leads to mandatory vaccinations. Once you've got mandatory vaccinations and your health freedom has been abolished, what rights do you have left? Honestly, absolutely nothing. Someone like me that tells you that the government is lying to you could just be considered crazy and mandated to a mental hospital without anybody even knowing what happened to me. That's where we're headed. Yeah. really fast. Why? Because yeah. the sheep say, just wear a mask. It's just a mask. Yeah. It's not just a mask. It's the start of the rema- it's the start of the removal of your rights. And it's the start of you giving them away freely. These rights that people fought and died for that you're literally giving away. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I kind of got distracted there. So good. <laughs> I really don't know what you're saying. We need to talk to public health. I have the number. I'm going to give it to everybody. And every time somebody goes into a store and they get harassed, I want you to call public health and I want you to say what I said here. Businesses need to be informed of the exemption. Customers need to be informed of the exemption. How easy would it be for public health to make a public health statement? That's what their job is. To institute a public health statement so everybody knows what's going on. But what do they say? Their little public health statements that they give to all the businesses just say mass are mandatory and they end it there. Why don't they mention the exemption? Do you think that was an accident? Or do you think they did it on purpose? And let's prove it. Let's get 100, 200, 300 people to call them and 
ask them to revise it. I can give them a perfect example. I already wrote one up for them. So I'm going to email it to them today. I'm going to call them today. I'm going to let them know everything that's happened. I'm going to talk about the guy that got shot for not wearing a mask. The time I got attacked in a parking lot for not wearing a mask. The time my wife's friend got kicked out of a restaurant because she wasn't wearing a mask. The time that Matthew almost got physically removed by security. Who literally, this is a perfect example of how the media creates problems. My friend Matthew went into Dollarama, showed the card. It was all on tape. You know what the security guard said? I literally just saw that on TV. I know it's fake, so you're not coming in. <laughs> Only because the TV told the security guard the card is fake, did he start giving my friend a hard time. To the point where he started putting on his gloves and was getting ready to physically remove my friend with mental health exemption from the mass law. Guess what happened? His supervisor had to come over and tell him, you need to honor the exemption. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because the cards are not fake. The cards represent reality and truth. And that's why the media is vilifying them like they vilify me, like they vilify Vlad, like they vilify our entire movement. Why? Because we will not comply. And that's all we need to do to win. Proof? I just did a live chat with Miss Peggy Hall. Probably maybe you know who she is. Why is she so famous right now? She just got mandatory masks overturned in Orange County, California. The most populous county in California. One woman with an idea and a few supporters made them remove that entire law. So do you think we can't do that here? Of course we can! Since those cards came out, public opinion has shifted dramatically in our favor. Dramatically. That's why it's on Global, CBC, CP24, MSN, Blog TO, NAR City, Real Toronto News, and like five other ones I can't even remember. Plus radio stations, plus ma media in Quebec. Why? Why is it the top story? Because they don't want you asserting your rights. They want you to be compliant, because when you're compliant, they can trick you into giving up your rights. Rights. If you don't comply, they cannot take from you what you are not willing to give. <laughs> so that's why the cards are public enemy number one. Look at this. We did the TTC protest. How effective was that? Within five days of us proving on national TV that you don't need a mask on the TTC. Look at these pathetic things they created. It literally looks like I hired a kindergarten child, gave him an Oreo in five minutes and he came back with his design. <laughs> it says I have a medical exemption. I'm not required to wear a mask. Does that look familiar? Does that look familiar? It's a knockoff of my card. If anything, this is the fake card. Mine is the real one because mine comes without strings attached. Mine is employed by citizens' rights. This is a permission slip from the government to not wear a mask on the TTC. Blech. My cards are freedom of choice anywhere you go. Anywhere you go. Let's get that right. Anywhere you go, you have freedom of choice. Don't ever forget that. I exempt myself. That's all you need to say. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. And what are they going to say? Absolutely nothing. They can't say that they don't know. Everybody knows. Millions of people know. Even people in the United States know. We attracted the attention of Dr. Ten Penny. She's got over 300,000 followers. I might even have to make cards in the U.S. if this gets out of hand. They really want to mess with me. I am doing Dr. Tenpenny's show on August 3rd. I wanted to let everybody know. I'm going to be her special guest. Apparently, I am special. You are. Thank you, guys. We're going to talk about this whole COVID thing. I'm going to also make it one of my, it's going to be my next episode of Mad World. So, Ayush is going to be uh, joining me. We're going to be doing a live chat from the Spadina TV studio hooked up with Dr. Tenpenny on August 3rd, which is my birthday, by the way. So that's my birthday present. I get to, I get to speak with Dr. Tenpenny and we get to blow this whole thing wide open. If you guys think I'm like a good debater, I might be Rambo in a debate. Dr. Tenpenny is the Terminator. <laughs>
Just listening to her talk gives you chills, and she she's absolutely incredible. We're going to talk about the testing, how it's false. We're going to talk about the reporting. We're going to talk about everything that they're trying to hide from people. So once again, educate the public, right? Because when you're educated, you make the decisions that are right for yourself. Last week the cards were really successful. Successful to the point that I used all the money that we create we, that we got from the donations to pay to make MAD a registered charity officially. And we get nonprofit status next week and the charity status will come within the following months. The kicker is we got so much coverage nationally that everybody, even I was getting messages from Germany, people from Rwanda, the weirdest country I haven't even heard of, saying your cards were brilliant. I love that you're standing up for society. I love that you're giving people a voice, and I love that you're giving them a way to fight back and win. Yeah. That's the key, fight back and win, to the point where we have people in the United States that want us to expand our back to work and mad initiatives to the United States. We are literally going to unite all of North America against this cause. And why are we doing this? Everybody has let their guard down and thinks this is all over. If you just listen to our government, they're letting you know it's nowhere near from over. Doug Ford said that they extended our emergencies to next year at least. But don't worry, it might be gone by the 2022 elections. Are you out of your mind? He also said Canadians should get ready to be wearing masks for years. Excuse me? Excuse me? But the sheep will tell you that we're only going to be wearing masks till September, of course. Then, we already know about the stage 2 lockdown. We anticipated it was coming in October because that's when the flu season kicks in. But thanks to our efforts and thanks to the awareness we are creating, unfortunately it seems the government has stepped up those plans. Just look at the United States. They're already relocking them down. They're closing bars, they're closing restaurants, they're closing all types of businesses, even in other countries. Israel's doing the same thing. So guess what's going to happen here? They're going to start doing the same thing. They're going to give us an excuse. They're going to start closing our businesses down. And restaurants that were already closed for four months, now operating at 25% capacity, are going to be shut down again. Why? They want to make it so businesses just give up. They just say, close the doors, forget about it, and wait till this is all over, which it will never be. So really, they're just trying to kill our businesses. We cannot let that happen. That's why back to work is more important than ever. That's why if I can expand it to California, which is the heart of the United States economy, we can really make an impact. We can really stop this. We are having such an impact that they are running rampant. I even got a memo sent to me, I can't say who it was from, that the government is feverishly trying to put together a law that would make protests like this and make information like I give to all of you classified as domestic terrorism. They want to make it so they can put someone like me in jail for 10 years under terrorist charges for telling you something like you have the right to exempt yourself from wearing a mask. This is how desperate they are. They didn't just kick me off Facebook, they can't just try to silence me, no. They want to pass laws to make it illegal for you to tell the truth when the government lies to you. This is the epitome of what we're fighting against. This is the epitome of why freedom is essential. Everybody needs to hang on to that thought. Freedom is essential. We will not comply with any mandates. We will not put up with unjust laws. And if our government tries to impose them upon us, we will unite as we have in united non-compliance. And as you see, our efforts are bearing fruit. Big time. Millions and millions of Canadians know who we are. Millions and millions of Canadians are starting to understand what we're really trying to do. And most importantly, pretty soon millions and millions of Canadians are going to agree with us. Thank you guys. Chris Sky, everybody, Chris Sky. Um, I'd like to read you guys some things. So, because there's been a lot of people talking about 
conspiracy theories and, conspir and calling us conspiracy theorists, theorists and all that happy stuff. First of all, you can be charged for a numerous amount of crimes in regards to conspiracy. Second of all, simple definitions are the most important part of every civilization. Words, words, words are everything. What is a theory? A theory is a hypothesis that is proven by research and rigorous research facts that can be verified. That's what a theory is. It gives you a whole new idea about what a conspiracy theorist is, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna read you the 10 steps to ruining a democracy and taking it over. Leave it alone. Okay, well, I, I know them off the top of my head anyways. First step, you need an enemy. You need an enemy that is internal and an enemy that is also external. That is what COVID is. It makes everybody afraid. It makes everybody scared. So it makes everybody, listen, what do we do? What are we gonna do? And when you're standing there scared and you have no answers for yourself, you're gonna wait for instructions. Second step, raise public unrest. We see the rise of all these crazy groups from Antifa to, to, to radical things happening to Black Lives Matter. You know, we are Canadians. We don't have racism in this country. We love each other. That's the fact. We have racism in our policies. We have racism in that house that needs to get out. Because this country is leading the world in democracy. We always have and we always will. Does anybody in this crowd right now know a racist? Anybody? I don't mean somebody who makes stupid comments. Sorry, okay, that's better. Stupid comments does not make you a racist. There's not one person in this crowd that is racist. What is Canada? What is it to be Canadian? The Prime Minister says that we don't have an identity. So why is it that everywhere I've traveled in this entire world, I welcome with open arms as a Canadian? Why is it that everywhere I've traveled in this world, people are like, I'm sorry, it keeps, yeah. People are like, I wish I could go to Canada. Why is it that we're the first country in the world that people want to live in? And our neighbors to the south. Because the rest of the world does not have democracy. Over the last three years, if you pay attention to the world news, in Hong Kong, there are millions of people and they've been fighting and they've been getting shot at and killed by their government. And what are they fighting for? Freedom, democracy, individual. It's doing it, hold on. Yeah, give me, no, no. <laughs> it's all right, I got this one. Is it, Here, where's the other mic? All right, people. A little old school, but you can hear me, can you? Yeah! All right. They're fighting for democracy. What is democracy? Oh, okay. I know we all have our opinions, but the, the bottom line is this. Democracy is the only working method of evolution in the world. It is the only society that can provide and accommodate every other philosophy in order for us all to evolve. Democracy gives the rights of every individual, no matter their differences or beliefs, to have opportunities. To, be, to, to have all the equal opportunities as each other, to build a prosperous life that is safe, to have their children raised with education and abundance, and they're supposed to be represented in that house. That house is supposed to sit five days a week, so they can discuss what they want. That house is a house of service. It's a house of service to every single one of us. How much are they serving us when they're only sitting twice a week? When, when did you, when did any of us vote to have a lockdown? Never. When did any of us vote to have masks mandated on us? Never. Never. Since when does a mayor have more authority than a premier or a prime minister? It's Never. bullshit, folks. Yep. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. that are necessary because they are necessary.
necessary. Our kids deserve an education. Everybody under the rainbow. 
Now, Bonnie Crombie, who should be ashamed of herself, considering every musician in this country is absolutely oppressed, the syrup is running out, and they have no way to pay their bills, and she lives in Mississauga, where Port Credit is located, and that is Music City North. Not one live musician has any access to making money. Not one live musician in the GTA has any source to get food. They're going to put these musicians on welfare. They don't want welfare. They just want to sing. They just want to play their music. And they want to entertain people. You want to know why they're oppressing musicians? I'll tell you why. Because musicians influence people the most. Asymptomatic means healthy. Healthy. We are healthy. You're healthy. That's right. Take your mask. 